Hi guys! So, as you can tell by my bare face and this blue outfit, we are going to do a makeup transformation inspired by Elsa from Frozen. You guys loved my Anna from Frozen makeup so much and I'm doing Disney princesses and I'm not sure if Elsa's considered a Disney princess now. I would consider her one. But I decided to do not only just one makeup, but two again. Her of just Elsa herself, and then I'm gonna transform her into what if like her face was not only frozen, but melted and dripping with icicles. I really wanted to do icicles on my face for some reason. Like you could have a really cool backstory if Jack Frost and her had a fight and they were actually together. That would be the cutest relationship ever. So I'm so excited to do this and let's see how it turns out. First of all, I'm taking the contacts out that I have now and I'm going to put in ones that are blue circle lenses. The first time I've ever tried circle lenses from PinkyParadise.com and these ones are prescription so I could see myself doing makeup throughout this whole video. Once your big blue eyes are in, I decided to get a wig cap to get the hair out of the way and for a wig we are going to put on much later. And then I decided to use one of my absolute favorite foundations lately. This is the Laneige, I think that's what it's called, the BB Cream Cushion Foundation. I think an Asian beauty makeup brand would be so good for this because we need a fair skin tone, but honestly, Elsa could be any skin tone in my opinion. But what we're looking for is a light coverage product that lets your skin show through. Natural looking is the word I'm looking for. You're gonna do that all over your face, down your neck. Make sure to get some of your shoulders to where it hits that skater dress of Elsa. Once that foundation's on there, we're gonna get some concealers. I'm using Poise Cosmetics. I'm first using the orange tone or salmony creamy concealer to cancel out any blueness under my eyes and then my actual skin tone to get rid of redness and more corrections under my eyes. We're just gonna dab this in areas and some lighter concealer on the high points of our cheekbones and then get a beauty blender to blend it all out to a nice finish. This kinda seems like a Kardashian-esque technique, but they are with natural tones and it's not heavily caked on. And then since I'm so concealer happy, I am using the NARS Creamy Concealer under my eyes because I have a ton of darkness on the corner of my eyes. Now that I'm starting to look like a creepy younger anime child, I am going to get a powder for under my eye area. This is the Bare Minerals Hydrating Mineral Veil. And then get a translucent powder to set the rest of the foundation and concealer that you put on your face, neck, and chest. Then I'm going to contour a little bit. You want to focus the contour more towards your jawbone than your actual cheekbone because Elsa has this interesting triangular, I would say heart-shaped face and it gets bigger around her eye area. So this is going to make it so our eyes really pop out. Since Elsa the cartoon has such huge eyes, we don't want ourselves to look like a complete anime cartoon, but a little bit of that Asian Harajuku adorableness. Then I'm getting my favorite highlighter. This is from Hourglass, super expensive. If you don't have this, of course, you could just use some sparkly white or cream eyeshadow. And then I'm getting my favorite peach apricot blush from Tarte. Now, before I start tackling them brows, I am going to get a black stippling sponge with some cream makeup to do some freckles. Now it's time to tackle the brows. I'm using Anastasia's Brow Wiz. You don't have to use something that fancy. Just any brow pencil would be great because we have to draw in these interesting brows that Elsa has. They kind of look like they're about to turn into a unibrow, but they are very feathery towards the center, almost to where your nose bridge starts, and they are very long and straight with a slight angle. I think they did her brows like this to make her not look evil, but very sinister. Now it's time to do Elsa's eyeshadow. I am going to start off with the base. This one is a very new one from NYX that I've never used before. It says it's waterproof. Don't know about that, but I am going to use this to start off with the base of some purple eyeshadow from my Blizzard palette. I love this because it's so sparkly and it's like perfect for Elsa. This first eyeshadow I'm using for this look is this purpley pink light magenta. And then I'm going to get this orangey red eyeshadow for my crease. That's going to be the blending color to my skin tone and my brow bone. 
Then I'm getting this hot red orange like color that reminds me of a tropical bird in the outer corner crease of my eye. And yes, this is going to be a lot of eyeshadow layers, but it's gonna be so worth it. Some darker purple shimmery eyeshadow in the corner towards the center of your eye and in the other corner towards the outer lash line. Girl, you know me and how I talk about reference pictures. This is key, especially for this part of the makeup. And then I'm gonna get some light white shimmery eyeshadow and tap that in the center of my eyelid. Bringing some of that purple eyeshadow down to your bottom lash line as well. Then I'm gonna line my waterline with the black coal eyeliner pencil. It's kind of gross. Getting some matte black eyeshadow with a pencil brush and smudging it on the bottom lash line. I'm just darkening in the outer corners of my eyeshadows on the purple with an even darker purple because I just thought it needed a bump up in the color saturation department. Now it's time for the wing eyeliner. Wing eyeliner I feel like is so universally loved but it is so difficult for me to make them even. Winged eyeliner is something you don't want to do in a rushed makeup. I mean I could do it but it will take me time. Then it's time to fit ourselves for some beautiful lashes. Then curling your natural lashes to prep them. I don't know what it is about this new lash glue, but it is so much simpler for me to put on lashes. With these doll-like eyelashes, I just thought they'd be so perfect, full and thick and whimsical for Elsa from Frozen. Once your eyelashes are slapped on near your pupils, it is time to get some lipstick. You want something that's a frosty berry pink. Slathering that on my lips and making sure that I put some concealer on my bottom lip because even Elsa herself I noticed has concealer on her bottom lip. For some reason they wanted her lips to look smaller than they naturally are. And once that makeup is done, we are gonna put on this wig that was handcrafted by someone pure evil because it was so difficult to put on my head. So I'm sorry if it doesn't look perfectly laid and gorgeous like a goddess. But once that wig is securely on your head, you're finished with this beauty portion of Elsa. I absolutely love this. It looks so adorable and cute, like a little anime doll. I didn't expect the eyes to look that cool. But wait, there is more. If you guys want to go even further with this to a creepy, even frozen side of it, and I'm not just talking about the title of the movie, you want to take that wig off, take the eyelash off on the side that is your dominant painting hand for makeup and we're going to spray that eyelash white and let it sit to the side because we are going to make this side of our face super frozen. I am getting an alcohol palette with a black stippling sponge and creating a color that has some hints of blue, red, a purpley tone with some brown so that it looks like she has decaying cold spots on her face. Not quite frostbite but that is just really freezing cold underneath all the ice. If you don't have alcohol palettes, because this is for people who are more interested in makeup and have been doing this, you could definitely use aqua paints for this. Just make sure you set the aqua paints after you paint them on your face. Then using a more blue tone color very lightly with the alcohol paint or the water aqua palette that you may be using with a thin paintbrush and doing vein marks. You could do it very dark maybe at first then tap it lightly if the color isn't light enough for you because if you get it too light it might just drip down your face and not make an actual vein mark. Whenever I do vein makeup I think of earthworms that used to come out after it rained in my town when I was a kid. You want something that's very organic and squiggly. And then we're gonna get some cream white makeup and lightly tap that on the highlights and high points of that side of your face so it looks very ashy and cold and dead almost. You're not gonna rub it too hard, just tap it with your fingers or a sponge. If you're doing this on someone that's not yourself and you want to be clean and sanitary. Now it is time to do the dripping icicle effect on the face. I got this product called Third Degree. I got it in clear and you have to mix A and B together equal parts and then keep mixing it till it's all mixed together and then slap that on your face. Now, if you do not have third degree, you can use gelatin probably, which would be a little bit harder. Maybe some tissue with some latex, but third degree is gonna give that real icy effect. Make sure not to get this in your eyeballs, please, or in your mouth, of course. But you're just gonna do thin layers all over the big surfaces of your face, like your forehead and your cheeks, and then icicles on the high points like your chin and your nose. 
We're gonna start off by doing icicle marks with a spatula. Then what I'm dusting on my face is some fake snow. If you do not have fake snow, you can use raw salt crystals or something that you are safe with and know could stick on to your face completely without it falling into your eye. If you think you might get this in your eye, please do not put any of these salt crystals or fake snow above your eyebrow area or near that eye because that would be so painful and we don't wanna do that. Then just making sure that third degree material dries on your face so that you could go back and do more layers. You want some parts to be thinner than others, like the cheek will be a little bit thin, and then it's gonna be very drippy and thicker near your chin to where it all slid down and melted, maybe from the sun. You could go back with this third degree and do not one, but two or even three layers. Just make sure that you have it very thin near your cheeks and have it thicker in icicle forms near your chin. You want it to make it look like the sun was beating down and dripping the ice down your face and then settling to that chin to where it makes the icicles. You might want to get globs of the third degree with the spatula and slap it in thick areas on your face like a paste because this is going to give a wave-like effect like in the ocean and that's what happens when the ice is melting but once you think you have enough of that third degree material on your face, you could put your white eyelash on that eye, and then you could do some detailed marks of that blue, reddish, brown, decaying color that we used before. And then I'm gonna put my wig back on and deal with this, which isn't my favorite, but I mean, it looks cute. And then you could be done with this step or take it a little further. You could put in a white contact on that side, the frozen side of your face. And then you will have completed your frozen Elsa makeup transformation with her melty side of the face. Of course, if you're doing this on a child, I would not put third degree on them. You could check out my other Anna makeup transformation to where you could see how to do that one. It would be more easier on kids. This one is a little bit for someone who is really into makeup and may be more advanced with certain materials. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now it's time to take it off. Leave me a comment below on what two Disney characters would make a perfect couple. Unlikely couple, but pretty cute. Elsa and Jack Frost, I know is super popular and I just thought it'd be so cool like, what if they were in a fight? What if he froze that part of her face and she was so angry that it like melted from her face? I just have so much fun giving backstories to these and doing makeup. Thank you guys so much for making this fun for me. All the products I use in this video will be listed down below in the description box as always. Thank you to PinkyParadise.com for always providing some pretty cool contact lenses. Girl, this dress was not my favorite either. It was super itchy and kind of tight. I had to actually tape my boobs down, little known fact, to fit into this. Maybe the Disney princesses don't have large chest areas. But I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did making it. Thank you for hanging out with me again today. I love you all so much and I'll definitely see you soon in more makeup transformations to come. See you then. Bye.